I'm taking a picture of him. He's smiling and I remember my face is behind the camera. And as I lower the camera, I remember his face when I took the picture. And as I'm lowering the camera, his face is completely changed. It was like a sense. I, okay, the best way I could describe it is a sense of doom. Oh, like that's creepy. Like the Grim Reaper. Like I felt just doom. Yeah. Come over like a dark cloud of just like this whole sound. Like if you're imagining a sound, it was like. <laughs> All right, welcome back to our podcast number two. Number two. Yeah, because I, I have to go <laughs> number two. How did I know you were going to go there? Why do you go, why do you go there every well, time? What was the look you gave me? Right when I said number two, you just gave me this look like you knew. I love that we're at that point in our relationship, 15, 16, 17 years later, where I can just give you a look and I know what you're thinking. We're yeah, but we still don't do number two in front of each other. Never. That's crossing the line. Definitely crossing yeah. the line. I'll we'll pee in front of each other. We'll cross dreams even. I'll pee in front of anybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so welcome back to our podcast, Our Haunted Honeymoon. Yeah, featuring yours truly. Husband and husband. Yeah. So what are we talking about today? What do you want to I discuss? I don't know. What's on the agenda? We don't have an agenda. <laughs> Popular to contrary belief. The straights want you to believe. The gays don't have an agenda. What are you, why are you trying to make a conspiracy now? That was so good. It was so bad. <laughs> what would be our agenda? Like the gay agenda. Is it just turning people gay? That's what they think it is. But you know the funny thing about that is? I did what? a comic one time about turning people gay. Because I yeah. was like, what? we're not the ones going to people's doors, knocking on the doors, being like, do you know anything about the Mormon faith? <laughs> not to knock Mormons or anything. Well, I, I think mean, you like, just did. I'm not trying to, but we're not the old, we're not the ones going to everyone's door and knocking, and being like, "Hey, have you ever heard about being gay? Do you want to be gay? Do you want to know what it's like to be gay?" <laughs> I never try to turn anybody. That's so true. You know what's funny too? We just had uh, Mormons come to our door. Remember? Oh my god! When we were having dinner, yes, and yes. I was like cooking and like entertaining, and like it was just not the time. And like I'm a nice guy, like I could deal with like. You know, I, I'm not going to like, I'm going to give you, I'm going to let you, I'm going to hear you out, you know? <laughs> but for some reason, like I had to cut him off and I'm like, we're gay. You don't want us. <laughs> and he's like, my brother is gay. So maybe the Mormon church is like, you know, maybe they're, they're, they're turning to the agenda. It's finally like they're on board, just like those dating apps that all of a sudden you can be gay on. Well, how do you know that there's gay dating apps when we've been together for 17 years way before there was any harmony <laughs> no i'm uh um, no i just see the like the commercials now where they're all gay friendly like oh like you can be who you want and you can date who you want and it's like a gay couple now i'm like are you fucking kidding me like 10 years ago do you remember I, uh, when we had to deal with that shit oh, speaking of commercials remember when we were on a commercial for a bank and it was a gay couple. And I remember some of the comments were like, that's it. I'm pulling my money out of this bank because you featured a gay couple. Yeah, yeah, I guess there's that too. <laughs> Anyways, it's just something you deal with though. That's just something we deal with on a daily basis. Whatever. It's fine. So we we went way off topic. Um, Yeah, so we're going to talk about um the, first, the second episode is actually going to be about the Paris catacombs. That's so exciting. It's so creepy. It is really creepy. Like, I, like, really just think about it real quick. Without us going into it and talking about facts and talking about our own personal experience about the Paris catacombs, it's just like an underground labyrinth where people of Paris desi- decided to put their their deceased relatives and family and loved ones down there below their feet. It's a but, giant tomb, right? Yeah, but it's like it's like a labyrinth, and it's like just like it, it, it's like it's like the devil meets Alice in Wonder down down oh. there. Like that's what it is. It's oh. like a, it's like a creepy labyrinth, Hell's Gates. Like it's just creepy, and it was just it just it was a bad idea. Like how many people in there? Like I don't know much about Paris, you know, government, but like. Well, who in Congress had to decide that that was okay to do? I have no idea. So, actually, that's a good point. We should talk about... So, 
How about on this episode, we should talk about the history a little bit. Okay. Then we'll tell our own personal story and ghost story that we had because, you guys, we had a ghost story there, believe it or not. (laughs) And then the third, I guess the last part, we can just wrap it up and, you know, talk about our final thoughts and stuff. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, why not? All right. Well, I don't know much about the history. I do know that there was... (laughs) Hold on, let me push up my glasses real quick. Why aren't you wearing your glasses? Just bought them three hundred dollar glasses. They're downstairs on the counter. This isn't what this is about. Okay, we'll I'm not getting into you with you. <laughs> we'll fight about this after. Okay, we'll okay. fight about this after. Pause. This. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, I hate that when they do like when the couples have that like counseling where they're like, "Oh, okay, we're just gonna pause and talk about it. And talk about it later. Yeah. No, we're gonna pause I, how do you the fight. Pause the conversation. Now? No, you can't we'll, pause a fight. You pause the fight. That's what you do because it's like something else came up, and he's like, "We're gonna pause this fight. We're gonna deal with this as a couple, something else, and then like we'll 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 regroup later." I can't do that. I have to talk about it then. I it's can't. A, yeah, he he always has to talk about it right there. <laughs> I'm the type of person that if we're fighting, it's like let's just like go our separate ways for a second. Like, why don't you get like take an hour and go do something? I'm gonna take an hour and do something. Not like leave the house, but like. Just be like apart for an hour to like just like cool down. But Aaron's like, no, we gotta talk about it right now. Yeah, I'm not that type. I need to talk about it right now. Well, while it's happening, or else it'll just never get talked about. It'll just get swept under the rug. And I can let certain things go. But like when it comes to fighting and stuff, that yeah. What 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 what? Why are you doing that? Face? Uh, did you hear a sigh? I heard the sigh. I saw your face. Damn, too. microphone picked up the sigh. <laughs> So, I, no, I think it has something, honestly, to do with my abandonment issues, probably. So, it's probably deep-rooted in Oh, my, my God. Oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> this isn't a therapist, this session, okay? <laughs> if we don't talk about it now, it's just going to, like, erupt, and no, nothing's going to get resolved, and we're going to end bitter, and then you're going to leave me, and we're going to, like, just, that's it. I've been yeah. with you for 17 years, and you have an abandonment issue? Not you. It's just... You know, one of my deep rooted things. But let's this isn't this isn't a therapy session. This You're is, right. This let's isn't the back. Paris catacombs. No. Yeah. There's much more important things to discuss. Alright, so let's dive right into it. Um some crazy facts that we were like doing some research about is like for one, like there is over six million. Six million people buried in the catacombs. Just the remains of people. Wow. In the catacombs. That's insane. I think at one point, I don't know if this still holds true today, but there were more people buried in the catacombs than when they were living on the streets of Paris. So how did these catacombs get built? Because they're and like they're underground. This was a long time ago. How did they get the, the manpower? Well, funny you should ask, Aaron. <laughs> so it started because like they they were having a problem with their cemeteries they were overrun with dead bodies and back then cemeteries were attached to churches like it was on the church property and so people would go to like mass and they would just smell dead bodies like yeah crazy right and i think this was um i might stand corrected but i think it was around the 17th century Uh uh-huh 1700s and um they basically they hired a bunch of people to move the bodies. And it was 6 million bodies that they were transporting to the catacombs. And it was like at night because they didn't want to freak everyone out. Wow. Wow. That's insane. That's what I'm saying. Like, who decided, like, whose who's desk did that idea land on? And who was just like, you know what? I'm going to sign off on that. Let's build this. I have no idea, but that's that's insane. Yeah, I Ooh. guess this was before cremation. I guess, but like that. I mean, it makes sense because they're they have much longer history than you know we do. So well, they yeah, we're running true. out of room, right, to hide bodies. I mean, not hide. <laughs> Shit! Why did I, how did that come out? <laughs> you want to talk about that? This is a true kind <laughs> podcast. Well, this oh, like I'm glad they you said it on on our podcast so that if anything happens to me people know where to look edit (laughs) (laughs) um so while we're on that subject real quick what would you rather do get cremated or buried oh god that's a really good question i the spirituality in me 
is like, I want to be cremated. Like, I want to be one with the earth. I want to be... How are you one with the earth? You're in, on fire. You're no, burned. I want How my, is that spiritual? Because I want my... Because I want my remains <laughs> cremated. And then I want to be scattered somewhere like nature -y. That way I can just like blend back into nature. And then, so that's the spiritual are side you, of me. Are ashes blending back into nature? Yes! That's the spiritual part of me. Give me a chance. Let me finish what Okay, I was go ahead. Say. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupted God, you. Damn it. You're right. How You're right. You're 100% okay. right. For once. We're about to have one of those fights now. Good thing they're going to know where the body is, right? <laughs> um. So, and then the, the logical side of me, because it's like 50-50, right? The logical side of me is like, okay, what if my brain is still going and I'm like, a conscious but unconscious like sleep paralysis and they put me in the the thing to cremate and i'm aware of everything like that movie awake or something like i would die i would die again well there's I would like die. machines that say you're dead huh there's like you're like hooked up to machines that say you're dead i've like, heard and seen things on the internet that say uh -oh, that google you, could, you googled it you googled it, it you <laughs> could you could survive a cremation or no, like i heard a story where someone was like you know or what was that movie there was a movie where like they took some kind of herb that made them like fall asleep but they were not dead they just seemed like their pulse stopped cbc where it like CBC? Yeah. What's CBC? CBC? <laughs> you're, so, you're so innocent. Are you trying to say CBD? CBD, is that's that what I meant. Oh, God. No, like, was it Skeleton Key where they were, like, giving Not whole... Skeleton Key. Remember that movie where they're, they're the one with Kate Hudson and she's, like, they paralyze her where, like, they're, like, dead, basically, but they're not dead. They're still conscious. No? I don't remember that part. Maybe and how does that have to, anything to do with cremation? Because I'm terrified that I might be, like, conscious, not dead all the way, and they accidentally put me in there thinking, oh, he's dead. Well, you're dead now once you go in. But I would die if that happened to me. But you're already dead. No, I'm not dead. That's the point. I'm alive. So you think you just, it was a miracle. You survived <laughs> death. <laughs> he has risen. <laughs> what are you, Jesus? I'm gonna go take my Bible around, my gay Bible, and make everyone gay now. There's the agenda full circle <laughs> no but like so what would you want to do well, i don't think you gave me an answer i'm 50 50 you're 50 50 so what am i supposed right. to do as the husband if i survive cry <laughs> well, well, well you got i'll do that but throw like, yourself onto my coffin and you, go i'm not going without you <laughs> okay now you're getting buried you're on a coffin you're in a coffin oh when did that happen i don't know you tell me but like you know the third how, the part of the, the, the spouse gets has to like unless it's in a will you, the spouse has to pick right really yeah i don't have a oh shit so what, what you am i supposed to say I, I don't know he was 50 50 yeah toss a coin <laughs> <laughs> let's get to what you would want i want to hear what you thought. burn me just like, be done with it like don't put makeup on me and put like <laughs> like you know how you so first of all people think that like there's what you're saying is an is actually as crazy as it sounds it's a rash not a rational you're not what do you call it it's like people have that phobia i don't know if it's a phobia it's people weird. me yeah here. you point yeah. to me so you so people think that all the time in like, but really like, do you know what they do to a, a corpse when they, before they bury them? You saw six feet under. Uh-huh. Great they show. They take all the like the shit out of you. They like take out the like. Not the, the shit though. Well, the shit comes out when you die. Exactly. Isn't it? Everything comes out. It Your comes bowel out movements. After we learned, right? Yeah. 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 Ugh, but weird. then like, um, what do you call it? They take out like the, your like. Ah! What yeah. Do you, like, the, the what's stuff, the word? The stuff, the, your pain, wow, all There's that stuff. There's a word for it, though. Yeah, yeah, they take out your, your, liquid? your placenta and all your that Your placenta? Like, That's <laughs> not the same thing. <laughs> Isn't that a baby? Like, when the baby comes you out of the placenta. Right? Your mom has a placenta. <laughs> okay, go, can, what, do you, what would you do? Just tell me, please. Burn so we can move on. Burn Like me. a witch? No. Like Salem Witch Trials? No. Well, that's another episode, by the way. <laughs> Sneak preview. Uh, no, uh, just burn me. Get All right. It over with. All and right. it's cheaper. Save your money. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so we need to go back to the catacombs. Yeah. Where were we? We were giving a history, a very awful history, because, I mean, you did your research, right? Oh, I did my research. 
Sure. We did our research. Okay, so when we were going um, on a trip, we uh, we went to Paris and it was London. No. No. Oh, I'm mixing up the other one. Yeah, okay. you're okay. definitely mixing up two different stories. What do we do then? Where do we go? Well, first, we're not even done with talking about the history of it. Yeah, they can Google so... it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got my trusty notes right here. So I got just a couple of brief things that were just like I thought were kind of interesting. I don't want to bore you guys with all these different details about the catacombs i mean you guys can google it yourself it's pretty you guys know about it too but maybe the catacombs were actually once fully open to the public but people got lost because of the size and complexity oh my god so this thing is huge it's not like it's it's not like a couple tunnels this thing is so complex and it actually goes beyond the streets of paris ew like it goes Far. that's huge it's crazy can you imagine getting lost though if you were down there like no you'd be lost forever that would be it no i that's would just terrifying. yeah no which actually leads me to my next one is mm-hmm. that like there was like i think he was a youtuber i don't know you guys could actually look up this footage if you want to it's pretty gnarly because we've seen it a long time ago but it's about this like youtuber who breaks into the um or sneaks into the catacombs and he gets lost and it's like someone is chasing him or something is chasing him he gets like it starts off pretty like normal and then it gets more intense and he's like starts to run and then he loses the camera and that camera was found by other people like tourists or whoever oh my god well that kind of lines up with our story too yeah well, we're, 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 so in World War II, they actually hid from the Nazis there. Oh, okay. So, and then there's wow. like, there's uncharted areas in the catacombs. So there's actually areas that, it's not mapped out fully. Like, parts of it are mapped out. But it goes on in so many different directions. Oh gosh. Forever. Like, they, they, they don't have it all mapped out. That is terrifying. And I think it's so crazy that at one point, it was open to the public. Right? Like, it, it is now, like, you can pay and go in there and, like, walk around in these specific areas. But it used to just be open to the public. Like, you didn't have to, like, buy a ticket. You could just walk in. Oh, my gosh. And it's pretty crazy, too. Like, they have, like... So, they have an entrance into the catacombs that me and you went through. Oh, well, let's just dive into our story then. So, let's just get into it then. So, we were going on a trip, and I didn't know even know what this was about. We were actually searching. I think we were searching for things to do, right? Because we were, we were young. We were like, what do we do stupid. in Paris that we want? Or we yeah, were always stupid. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, we were, like, researching different things to do, looking up blogs. would be like, the top 10 things to do. And it was like, catacombs. I was like, I don't know what this is. So we did our research on it. And we were like, okay, it's going to be a nice little tour underground. So we went to go. That was, like, one of our number one things we had to do. And I remember going there, and it was, like, super busy. The line was wrapped around that little yeah. circle, right? It was a weird thing trip like we had planned yeah. this trip for six months we were going to go to paris and then after that we were going to go to spain and barcelona at barcelona in barcelona and um i, I remember the, the whole trip started off really weird like i it was the the night before we went on this trip that we had been planning for months i got like the flu i got Ugh. super sick i was sleeping i fell asleep in the whole airplane and then when we landed we were so like the way we like because we were trying to do this cheap the or the cheapest way we could yeah the flight was awful like we had a land a layover in denmark that lasted eight hours <laughs> it, we landed in paris at like midnight so like we hadn't slept for like some crazy amount of hours oh well, i did but because i was sick aaron hadn't i did i was going crazy you guys i went because like we were doing it really cheap because we didn't have any money we we're like but we want to travel. We we got the travel bug after our honeymoon, or after our haunted honeymoon, after our haunted honeymoon. <laughs> so uh, we did it cheap. Really, it was really cheap though. We did like that um, the app, like Sky Scanner or whatever Sky, whatever that one was. Yeah, and we got the tickets, but they were like layover after layover after layover, and then you're on those things. So I didn't get sleep for like 36 hours. I was literally going insane. <laughs> yeah, I remember you were kind of just like bad. You, you were like loopy like you i remember you were just like like i don't know you weren't a hundred percent yourself like you were just like i remember like you you kind of looked like 
I don't know what the right word is. Like zombie. Vac- yeah, zombie. Yeah. I guess that's the best way. Well, that's exactly it. how I felt. Yeah. Like a zombie. <laughs> and then I was super sick for most of the time. So like literally you guys the first day in Paris, I couldn't eat. Like I have never got I I'm probably the one person in the world who flew to Paris and lost weight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like so that's anyways. True. We go to the catacombs. And I, it was so funny because we were actually supposed to go to Disney World this day. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember. And we, we missed the train. Oh, no, I don't remember that. Yeah. And so we were just like, well, let's go to the catacombs <laughs> then. <laughs> and so we went and it's like when the entrance to the catacombs is like this little green. I don't even want to use the word building because it's not a building. It's it like a, a shed. shed. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's in a town square. There was like it, we were on the side. It was like one of those um roundabouts, remember? I did. It was a yeah, circle, yeah. right? Yeah. And you go there and you I mean, we took the public transit and we got there and there was a line wrapped around it and we're like this can't be it. It's a shed. There's like a box. It looks like a phone booth almost. Yeah, it looked like a phone booth, like a big phone booth. But anyway, so we go in there and you got like a little security guard that's like waiting right there right by the ticket booth, but like then they open like this like gate area or like not even a gate. It's a it turnstile. Like, turn yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> and they just let you go. Like no one's like guiding you in there or nothing. They're just like, go ahead. So you're walking down like this spiral staircase that seems like it's going on forever. And it's <sighs> like, if I remember correctly, it was very like a natural staircase like it was built like it was like stone and stuff like that like it was steep there were steep steps it started to get it really started to mess with your mind yeah because you're like you see you, when you're on a spiral staircase you can't tell how many flights you're going down no you couldn't see up or down like how far you didn't know how long you were going to you're traveling and so. the fact that there was only that entrance and you don't know about any kind of exit or anything and the further you go down i it might like claustrophobia started kicking in bad like super major right thing because i was like fuck like you start to like think in your head you start to go crazy and be like if something happens like what am i gonna do do i just run back up the staircase and like the further you go down the further you're like oh my god like it's that much more further up and meanwhile i'm <laughs> fine i'm like do 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 let's go see that we're going on because i think this was the first day i was kind of, i was feeling better a good enough to like do this yeah and so you anyways you like at the bottom well, of the stairs. Sorry, not oh, to sorry, drive, no. but you no, were probably, please. you were like cloudy too though, I yeah. think. You were still like kind of sick. Like you were like cloudy, right? So you were just like, well, whatever, kind of like on the sleeping medicine kind of, right? Like you were kind of Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was freaking but it was like So at this time I was working retail. And so a read so when I was working retail, like I would be like good until th- through the holiday because it's the busiest time of year and then february hits and i always get super super sick like like 10 times more than normal uh. but then like at this tr- i remember getting sick and then this was the first day where i was starting to like feel all right but i don't know i feel gross yeah but anyway so um we're finally getting down the staircase oh yeah yeah we're getting down the staircase, and um, you're in this room, and the walls are made of like it's it's like you're you're underground, so it's like the walls look like I don't know how to explain it, like stone but cave. It's yeah, like a mixture, cave. right? It's like a mixture between like you're in an old medieval castle and you're in a cave. Yeah, like, <laughs> like it's weirdest thing. And then there's like pictures hung hung on the wall, and you have this like um a headset and the headset's like it's a guide it's a tour that's like just on the headset so it's not like we're following anyone no. or there's not like a tour guide no and the the headset is telling you like the history of it and me and aaron were in a we're in this room with a group of people but then it started clearing out and we realized we were alone and they weren't sending people down for some reason they yeah. had stopped it God, I forgot about that detail. It started Remember? getting super eerie. It got quieter and quieter because people were like, because there was things on the wall to read, and then there was the radio going on, right? Yeah. And it flipped off, and like the radio flipped off because, you know, you're done with that section. And then by then, everyone had moved on. And it was everyone like, was gone. 
Yeah. And me and Aaron and I didn't even realize it until it happened. Right. And by then we were like, fuck, we got to kind of catch up with the group a little bit. So we kind of went a little fast down this hall, this first hallway. The, and the moment we started stepping down it, you could start to hear like, it sounds like a scary movie when you hear the, the little girl laughing. Remember? Yeah. Like, but it, I mean, you hear like... It's it's so creepy because you can <laughs> you can hear you can literally hear people within the walls, but they're muffled and it doesn't sound exactly human. But then you're like, is yeah. this the tour? Is or not the tour? But like, are these other people walking these tunnels, or is it just a effing demon that's just on the next beyond uh, the wall? Uh, yeah. So, anyways. There's also, like, there's just one sign, and the sign says don't... It doesn't say, like, entrance, exit, go this way, go that way. It doesn't say any of that. It's just the only sign that I ever saw was don't touch the bones. I mean, you guys, the bones. Like, there's literally... Once we get past the hallway, we finally start to see... We turn corners, and we see skeletons, skulls bones which is so crazy because there's so many people in, like that are down there not that we can see at this point we don't see anyone but there's so many people that go down there because we we were in line with people that and it's like there's just dead bodies there. there's just skulls everywhere there's just bones everywhere and no one like is bothered by this this is this is pretty freaking creepy it was eerie they were the, a lot of them would you remember they were melted into like the wall and melted into the floor it was kind of like they were a part of it right it yeah was, that's a good way, yeah it was a part of it like a whole being kind of thing yeah that's a really good way to put it like just Ugh. like it seemed this the the skeleton seemed part of it kind of like you would think like the american horror story house was its own creature kind of thing you thought that the catacombs was a, such a, a force like yeah. of energy like a being yeah right? it became its own thing Ugh, creepy so anyways we're like we're so far away from everyone and we haven't seen people for a while so aaron and i just start like taking pictures and well i'm taking pictures and i was like aaron go go in front of me. i'm gonna take your picture oh and- wait before that it's like you guys first of all while we're walking down this hallway and it's you hear the voices and everything i forgot to mention that it's starting to get smaller oh remember? yeah the walls start like it feels like it's just getting the whole the walls are like literally closing in on us literally yeah we're so we're we finally turned the corner from the second room and there's still nobody and we're like okay we got to kind of move it on a little bit like we're lagging a little bit and uh we turn the corner we get down this long hallway where you can't like the end of it is kind of black like you just see a black hole almost do you remember yeah and then and it's small too. tiny it's like it seems so far in the distance it's literally like it's freaking creepy Ugh. like i don't understand why people do this i don't either the walls were literally like getting smaller though as you went because i remember my head was starting to hit the ceiling at that yeah, point yeah because i was part. in the picture well, go ahead with the picture we were gonna so say. anyways i'm like aaron go i'm gonna take your picture and i he was like okay and he was in a good mood like he was like you know like yeah he was been cloudy on this trip but like he was overall in a really good mood and he wasn't like like because you really had highs and lows during this trip because like, of like the lack me. of sleep yeah but you know i'm like always smiling i'm always happy yeah. i'm always just like have that high energy kind of thing and then then like all of a sudden so i'm like yeah so he he's excited he's taking the he's going in front he's like his body literally takes up wall like almost wall to ceiling like because it's so getting so small now that he's like anyway so he, i'm taking a picture of him he's smiling and i remember my face is behind the camera and as i lower the camera i remember his face when i took the picture and as i'm lowering the camera his face is completely changed like the color in his face is drained away (laughs) the smiling in the picture just like turns into like almost like a panic horror scared but like just like i don't know what the right word is like just almost like you looked pasty it was just out of a horror movie because i felt just like that moment when you, I don't know. I have really good intuition, and I, you too. Like we have, I feel like we have that really good energy intuition. But I, I think like I, I think I'm getting better at at realizing that I have good intuition. But you, since I've known you, are very, very good at intuition. 
at your own intuition and like i think you're a very good judge of character like you can you know if someone is a bad person right off the bat you can feel the room you know the I energy do. like I, it's weird it's yeah, really it weird. is i've noticed it yeah it's like a I don't know what the voyancy of that is, but like it's voyancy, the, you know how they say clairvoyant is like you see or something, and there's omnivoyant when you. What's a lot omnivoyant? Of I think omnivoyant means like you you're voyant in all different things. So there's a hearing one too when you like. That's you Claire. Hear. Is that Claire? Oh, what is it? Oh, I don't know what the seeing one is then. Oh, one of them is clairvoyant. One clairvoyant. Of um... When you can see things that are supernatural, when you can hear things, and omni. Is like all of them or something. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, or oh, audio voyant or something. Maybe I don't. I don't know. That. that would make sense for the hearing one, right? It would. I don't think it's that one. But like, I I don't know. I I think it's the cancer thing. I'm a cancer, so they're said to be like intuitive or something. Oh, they have God. The intuitive. You guys are just emotional wrecks. I mean, that's for real though. I'm not denying that. But but like, yeah. So I don't know. I. The, you definitely felt something I in that moment. I did feel something. My whole life. What did you feel like? All right. It was. Sorry. I, I know I interrupted you, but I remember now. Like, I don't think we've actually ever really fully talked about what you were feeling at that moment. Because I remember seeing. You saw. A shift in you. But I, I don't think we've ever actually talked about what you actually felt. Well, I think when I was done with the experience, when we were done with that, we just both wanted to forget it for a while. And then yeah. we never did because it was so terrifying. But. It was like a sense. I okay. The best way I could describe it is a sense of doom. Oh, like that's creepy. Like the Grim Reaper. Like I felt just doom. Yeah. Come over like a dark cloud of just like this whole sound. Like if you're imagining a sound, it was like <sighs> come over. Kind of like on. Do you remember the Zelda where the creature on Ocarina of Time where the creature went? They would jump down and grab you. Well, I remember it was a shadow over you, yeah. and you would move. You had to move out of the way I'm before it grabbed you. Yeah, it was like that, where like there was this just this presence. I felt like doom. Like, like you felt like something was going to grab you, or uh-huh. you felt like some. Oh, okay. It's like when you're like scared that when you turn off the light when you're a kid and you're running down the hall because you're scared that something's behind you and you can't oh, like it's yeah. about to grab you. I was just like, if we don't get out of here, something bad's going to happen crazy yeah. i'm glad you didn't share that with me when <laughs> the moment no, was happening i mean i almost died i was so paralyzed with fear but anyway so like I, i'm lowering the camera <laughs> i see that look in aaron's face that he i mean imagine he was just telling you guys what his feelings were like i saw that in his face and i lowered the camera and he looked at me and he said can we go <laughs> and we're barely on this like <laughs> tour paid money like i still wanted to see everything and I, but i knew that he needed to get out of there and i was like yeah you, you sure like you want to go he's like yeah can we go please and i was like yeah sure so he kind of goes he goes right behind me like he's ready to bolt it out of this place yeah that's so not like me though like i mean especially back then i was way more adventurous with these kind of things but even then um i wasn't a scaredy cat like i would still want to do things for the experience yeah and but then i just couldn't do it i couldn't bring myself to go on i was like if something if we don't get out of here something bad is gonna happen and you have to listen to that right and i knew i knew too because like (laughs) me like i would probably i I was excited to do it i we were in paris like i i we were in paris how often do we get to go to paris how often do we get to experience going to the catacombs and we already had stayed in line and freaking paris was cold in february it was freaking freezing and we were waiting in line like uh, like i wanted to do it i wanted to do the experience yeah. and i remember the look on aaron's face there was no way i was gonna fight that like no. i was like i knew he need what he needed for himself and i was like and i i, I was like yeah for sure like, yeah you're my husband um, we're gonna get out of here and i felt really bad too because like i knew you wanted to do it really bad and i i wanted to do it really bad too but i just knew i couldn't and i just like i i was just grateful that you like were open to that because like we both have been through anxiety and things like that but that wasn't what that was like no, i know yeah. i can separate what anxiety and bad energy is like as i know the two different feel they're two separate different feelings it was definitely bad energy yeah i would say like now i think if i was in that situation i would be able to realize there was a bad energy yeah. then i just thought like something feels wonky you know what i mean like yeah. not understand it or not really invest in that feeling your third eye wasn't open all the way yet. yeah <laughs> you're just, just blinking 
I was just like, oh, so I think I was just like, especially back then, I was just like, doo doo doo, like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, ignoring stuff and just going with the flow, yeah, and not really like looking within, yeah. But anyways, so Aaron like kind of rushes behind me, and I remember, in, I remember thinking like, we're not gonna see a lot. Take a picture. Like something inside me said, take a picture, and so. Aaron gets behind me and I take a picture of the tunnel. Just, I don't know. I was just like, I wasn't going to see a lot. I'm going to take a picture. And we leave and um, it was actually like a couple, I think it it was probably like a month, maybe two months later, we were talking to friends about the experience and we're like, we're just sharing like what, how creepy it was and he was really into that kind of like paranormal stuff. And he's like, can I like, do you have a picture? Like, I want to see the pictures. And so I was showing, we were showing him the picture and the picture that I took when Aaron came rushing behind me. And that was the last picture I took. If you zoom in to the very end of the tunnel, the black tunnel, you see a black figure, hominoid figure that has no neck, but it's like, bulky and big and it kind of looks like oogie boogie almost from nightmare before christmas what do you mean oogie boogie's green no like the shape kind of shaped like that kind of it was like we i mean we have the picture hopefully i'll be able to share it on our youtube channel so he's like he zoomed in he's like that's a shadow man and we had no idea what a shadow man was so we had to do some like digging and doing some investigation but I guess, like, around the world, there's this, like, especially in areas like this, when people take pictures, there's this hominoid figure. It never has a neck. It's called a shadow man. And it's, like, it's just a dark entity. And it would have been, it would have been standing exactly behind where, like, farther down the tunnel. But it would have been standing exactly behind Aaron when I took his picture and I saw his face drain. I could not sleep that night. I remember that when he told us that. And when we actually saw a picture for the first time, I got like, I'm getting chills right now thinking about it. I know. Like, because this is another one of those experiences where we just kind of rode off. But it was such a huge impacting moment. Like, looking back, that was so terrifying. And knowing that that was behind us, that like, it was like, it was a weird thing because the matching, you got to match your feeling of doom and that with, the picture and that doesn't happen all the time no because you really it, it just basically not justified what do you call it uh validated validated thought, thank yeah. you validated that you your feelings were accurate there's something was happening something was there and literally we have pictures of that same exact tunnel yeah and one picture has the shadow man not every picture has the shadow man like no. like it wasn't like another person in the distance no we, we zoomed in we zoomed in and i remember doing the um brightening up because i i do photo retouching and stuff so i remember brightening it up changing different levels and everything to see if it would create like get rid of the shadow effect but it was literally like it was the shape of a human but when you change the effects it doesn't just take away the shadow and there's enough light for it to be because there was torches on the wall. Do you remember? There wasn't. Yeah, like, it's so creepy. It's so cre- I know. I hate talking about it, but I'm glad we are. <laughs> I know. It's like a therapy session. Yeah, it is a therapy session. But like the the shadow, like oh, also I totally lost my train of thought. Sorry. Yeah. But the it was this was what seven eight years ago. Yeah. And it was actually we didn't realize until after, but the picture we took it was on an iPhone, and it was those live pictures. You know how they Oh move? my god, yes. But right when we found out about a week before that, Ugh. I had put my I had deleted I was deleting pictures on my phone. Yeah. But that picture and a couple other ones, I moved to an email to save the picture. So I don't think it does the effects, but I know that it was live because I had the setting on at that time and didn't realize I did. Yeah. But I yeah. wonder if there's a way to like can you imagine if that sh- you hit live and all the shit that thing moved? Ew, 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 stop, stop, stop. No. <sighs> but anyways, that was really scary, and it's not a memory that I'm really proud of or anything, but, um, God. Super creepy, but, like, if you guys have any, like, creepy stories about the, um, Paris Catacombs, please leave it in the comments. Let us know. It's, re- like, 
well, our experience was really, really, like, it was short-lived, but it was creepy, and it definitely left a mark. Yeah, and uh, if you want to check out the Paris Catacombs, please do so. There's a bunch of information online. Um, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Our Haunted Honeymoon. Yeah, leave a review, please. Hopefully it's a good one. And um, anyways, we'll see you guys next week. Yeah, next Tuesday. Come back and hang out with us. See you guys later. Bye.